In this video, I'm going to discuss on how to get the maximum range out of your camera that you may have mounted on the back end of your RV. Many RVs these days come with these Ferion cameras, or at least are pre-wired for them, and then the dealer may install it as part of the sales package. Now there's two types of Ferion cameras, an observation backup and a backup only camera. And the observation backup camera is the preferred camera over the backup only because it has about twice the range. However, the techniques that I will show you will work with either camera. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure the antenna is pointed straight up like this. This is a monopole antenna and you're going to get the best range with it pointed up. And I'll show you the theory about that in just a second. Now this antenna is spring-loaded and it will snap back so you probably will want to use some heat shrink or some electrical tape to keep the antenna in the vertical position. And as I previously stated, this is a monopole antenna which means that it's an omnidirectional antenna and it has a radiation pattern similar to a donut laying on its side as you can see here. And if we take a cross section of the antenna, you can see the radiation pattern looks kind of like a donut. Now the shape and size of the cross section, called lobes, may vary slightly depending on the design of the antenna. It could be a little bit more of a fat round donut, or it could be a little bit of a squished extended length donut. But just keep in mind the general shape of the radiation pattern and I think you'll understand the concept. So when the antenna is raked back at an angle, you can see the radiation pattern now lifts on the front side and lowers on the rear side. Well, obviously the problem then is that the transmitted signal from the camera could either miss the monitor in the cab, or if the radiation pattern is a little more rounded, it would at least not be as good of a signal. So you're actually, potentially at least, losing some signal by having this kind of an angle to the antenna. So let's straighten the antenna. Now when you look at the radiation pattern, you can see that more signal will reach the cab. And that's the whole concept behind this theory of making the antenna vertical, is a higher degree of signal should reach the cab. And of course, the stronger signal you have, the better reception you have. And next, we should look at how we power the camera. Quite often, the clearance lights will be used because it's a close-by source of power. However, we have to ensure that the trailer wiring is sufficient so that we don't have an excessive voltage drop. So with the trailer clearance lights running as well as the camera, we want to measure the voltage to see how much voltage drop we have. And we want to do that as close as we can to the camera. And ideally we should have less than a 3% voltage drop, which should be somewhere around 11.5 volts. Will the camera work on less voltage than that? Probably. But the lower the voltage, the lower the performance. So to get the maximum transmitter range, you want at least 11.5 volts. So what can you do if you have low voltage? Well, one thing, you can find another source of power for the camera. But let's say you're using the clearance lights. What do you do then? Well, if your RV has incandescent lights, you might be able to swap those lights out for LED versions and that will lower the overall current demand on that circuit and it might improve the voltage a little bit. So that's an option. And if you go that route, just make sure you use DOT approved LEDs. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to use my voltage drop calculator. Let's assume a 35 foot long cable length for the trailer. And generally taillights are about 2 amps each, so that's 4 amps if you say you have two taillights. Let's add another 5 amps because let's say you have around 18 or so clearance lights. And clearance lights are around quarter amp a piece. So if you have, say, the normal complement, 5 in the front, 5 in the back, 3 on each side, whatever. Okay, you're talking 16, 18. Let's say totally you have 9 amps of load. And a common wire gauge that the manufacturers use for lighting circuits is going to be around 14 gauge. And with this setup, you're going to have a 13% voltage drop and maybe 10.5 to 10 and 3 quarter volts at the camera. Well, by changing out to LEDs, you know, they're going to be about one tenth of the dissipation of an incandescent light. Let's drop those 18 clearance lights from 5 amps to half an amp. So we're still using the same two incandescent bulbs for the taillights, 
but now we have a four and a half amp load and now we have 11 and a half volts at the camera which means that the camera is going to get more voltage and probably have a little more range so to summarize to get the maximum range out of your Furion camera system of course you want to get the observation camera if possible but straighten your antenna and make sure you're powering the camera with at least 11 and a half volts I think you'll find that your range will be improved.